Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar about cultivating creativity. Um, it's great that you can join us. Very excited to see you here at West Island School. Now, just a few housekeeping rules. If you notice at the bottom of your toolbar, there is a Q&A um, little icon. And if you want to ask any questions about your child's um, arts education or about the arts in general at West Island School, then you can post your question on there and we will be able to reply to you as we carry on. But you might want to hold off on your questions for a little while because you might find that your questions are answered as a course of this presentation. Okay, now rich, varied and inclusive. That's three words that I would use to describe the arts at West Island School. It's often to referred to as the soul of our school. And I have to tell you that the person at the helm of this creative dynasty has been none other than Lee Delgano for the past 18 years. And it's my absolute pleasure to invite Lee um, to join us tonight and to explain to you about cultivating creativity. Good evening, Lee. Hello, Helena. Thank you very much for the introduction and good evening, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you uh, and thank you for signing on to, to tonight's webinar. And I just want to uh, welcome you to the arts and I want to share with you tonight um, a little bit of curriculum thing, things that we do, uh, some student work. But underpinning all of that is our approaches to teaching and learning um, creativity. And, uh, and it's really all about inspiring and nurturing creative thinking um, and to be curious and question the world that we live in. Now, I've been here at West Island School for 18 years and uh, creativity essentially has never changed, but our world has changed around us. And more than ever, uh, to be creative is something that has uh, gone beyond what our traditional views are. And I hope tonight that I can and uh, share with you some of the things about uh, being creative and cultivating that creativity. So why tonight's presentation is, I'm gonna walk you through why we believe creativity matters, um, how we use a model of uh, thinking that cultivates creativity. And I'm gonna share with you some examples of curriculum practice and some student work across five disciplines. And I also wanna finish with sort of what the, the future holds for our young arts learners. But to begin with, let me just take you through our pathways. And I'll be super quick here. So uh, the arts is uh, found across pre-16 and post-16 phases of the school from year seven to year 13. Uh, in pre-16 and the MYP years, we offer the essential art, drama and music as the basis, as the foundation. By the time we, the students get to year nine, we introduce uh, media, which is alongside uh, visual art as part of the MYP program. Uh, and students have to choose between art or media and another one between drama or music. Once they get into GCSE studies um, at year 10 and 11, the same subjects continue, but this time we add dance. And then those five disciplines then continue into the IB, uh, sorry, into the, uh, the years 12 and 13, where we offer the IB diploma program, the careers related program, and also the international diploma. And we have performing arts and visual arts and design uh, BTEC courses. The only difference there for the IB is uh, the fact that media then becomes um, the study of, of film. Um, and very quickly, our, our programs that we teach are not really like a history of art or an appreciation of music, nothing really like that at all. We are very uh, conceptually orientated uh, through inquiry and also through the development of skills uh, and acquiring skills uh, to present those uh, concepts through artistic uh, forms. Uh, knowledge 
Knowledge is important in our subject, but it doesn't really drive uh, our curriculum programs. So we, we tend to leave behind our traditional roles of transmitter or, or disseminator of contact content. Really our role as arts teachers is about uh, cultivating creativity through inquiry and then through real life uh, examples. So for instance, let me give you there in year eight, under the concept of change, there's a really fun title called Don't Gobble Funk Around With Words. Now, this is a drama unit and in drama, the students will actually learn the skills and the techniques of sound and physical expression. And what they do is they study different theatre traditions. So there's a little bit of knowledge that's coming in, but they put that knowledge into practice. And what they do is they bring about the con um, highlight, investigate the concept of change and how we can change text into uh, physical and uh, audio oral expression, how they can bring characters alive to actually deliver messages about uh, from basically it's from text pa uh, page to stage it's that kind of um, a con context so for us it's not really learning about what are the theatre traditions but we make inquiries into those and and then pick up some of those to personalize it and then go through um, sort of performance and anything that's practical uh, demonstrate through practical skills um, these this sort of con these concepts now we get to year 10 to 13 those concepts still exist but there's a little bit of a different um, uh, shift and what we do it, it's still a strong focus but we take on roles and and investigate the processes of making our art forms and so being researchers performers actors curators artists dancers um, that we take on those primary roles and then we use these kinds of exploration Explorations, uh, experimentations through those skills to actually learn more about uh, the knowledge bases that we that we sit upon. So, you know, we might look at uh, different musical cultures, world musical cultures, uh, different film directors uh, from different cultures. Uh, same with uh, theatre traditions from around the world. Uh, you know, we look at theorists, practitioners. So we look at their work and we try to one, recreate it and be inspired by it and, or, and also cultivate our own creativity and our own personal style by building on other artists that have gone before, before us. Um, you will probably notice that in those previous slides there that you know a lot of the younger years is, is mainly about themselves and where they fit within the world but as we go um, higher up into the school, uh, we start to look at really more wider in the world and sort of social and uh, social issues uh, and how we fit within those. So normally in the younger years, it's about us as individuals and then it becomes us interacting with the, the world around us. So I'm just going to stop my slide here for a minute and uh, I'm gonna ask you actually, um, to show me your creativity. Now, are you ready here? Now, there's nothing, you don't have to do too much. So what I've got is a piece of Lego. And this Lego, actually there's three pieces here, if I take them apart. Um, I've got three pieces of Lego made into one. And I'm going to give you about 20 seconds. And in the Q and A, and Helena is there waiting for you, I would like you to suggest to me how many uses that you could come up with with these Lego blocks or Lego pieces. So how many uses, what could this Lego be used for? 20 seconds, a little Q&A, off you go. Oh, I've got a good one here, Miss Delgano. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please fire yeah, away. Thing, you could use it as a phone stand. I love it. Oh, that is, now that, 
comes across to me as um, a, a quite a, a functional approach to uh, a piece of a uh, piece of Lego, which is absolutely part of creative creative thinking and creative design. Functionality is very, very important in oh, creative I've got process. a very good one here, Lee. Chopsticks yeah. holder. Ah, okay, again, functional. Um, I like it. So yeah, there's some very creative parents out there. So um, obviously, uh, making cross references to things that already exist, um, which is part of the creative process where you take something uh, that has a, and you look at it from a different perspective. And that's going to come up a little bit later in my presentation. So thank you uh, for those, for those um, responses. Now, I have got a video here. I asked some of my students the same questions. So how many uses can you create with this? So I could put a razor on top of it, and if not, uh, looking at the Lego, if you um, take it half by half, you could actually put a paper on it. You could um, pierce it and make some jewelry for yourself, like by making holes in the Lego block and making creative jewelry, like earrings and necklaces. Propping up a car in the middle of the rainforest when you are out of fuel. Uh, I think I can make a helicopter. Like you can use it as a bicycle stopper. You can put it on the floor and then you can jump on your bed so your parents can't get you when you did something bad. You could make a pyramid and build like a tower. Uh, I think it can be used as like a stencil if you want to draw like a rectangle or something. Oh, I think you can use it as a very small green screen. It can be a leaf, it can be a tree or anything that's green. You can use it as a sword to fight alien from space. <laughs> so we have some very interesting responses there from our students. Um, some of them, again, very functional. Uh, and but some of them quite new, quite novel, quite original. And then there was just some quite wild and wacky, to be honest. Um, but that is all part of the creative uh, process. And it takes all types to, to bring all of those ideas together uh, to, to drive our, our, our existence forward. And um, I was quite amazed. Several of the children liked to talk about they would leave the Lego on the floor so their parents would step on them. They're obviously very, very painful to step on. So they saw it as a, a kind of uh, protective barrier, uh, which is, again, is quite functional, but I'm not sure parents how... Um, whether or not you've had that experience. And, and uh, so there's some very interesting replies. And I had fun making that video with. So I could put a razor on top of it. And if not. Okay, so let's see why, let me tell you about what I think why creativity matters. And um, throughout history, creative, creativity has been regarded as a, as a form, um, something that's been practiced by the elite, you know, the painters, the poets, the, um, the performers, the musicians. But these days, creativity means a whole lot more in our complex world, where innovation responds and drives sort of socioeconomic and, and technological uh, change. And so to be successful in life and learning and work, we absolutely need to develop a range of competencies beyond literacy, beyond numeracy, beyond that rote knowledge. Um, if we are going to successfully navigate through the world, which is rather challenging and so quickly changing these days. This video that I've got here actually sums up um, these 21st century competencies. And uh, this I think was done in 2019 and leading the list of skills is creativity.
So life, learning and work has never, ever been more challenging. And I think that's a really excellent uh, video that just sums it all for, for us as um, people who work with creativity every day. And we just happen to work uh, with creativity through the arts. Um, so, and at West Island School, where really the school is very committed to arts education from year seven to 13. And um, it is considered a significant domain in this school in which creativity is taught, learned and practiced. So what does this actually mean for your child? And um, well, for me, over the years that I have been teaching, it has changed a lot, but now for me, right for, uh, here and now, it's it matters because it's about well-being, it's about brain development, and it's also about employment. And and so the World Economic Forum in 2016 put together a a report, they surveyed leading uh, global companies, employers, and they outlined uh, these employers were were questioned and asked what skills they believed or regarded were important in the 21st century workplace. So 10 skills from 2015 to 2020, and you can see that creativity is on the rise. There is significant um, brain and well-being research uh, out there at, right now that attributes arts education experiences um, to having a remarkable effect uh, and impact on students' academic, social and emotional development. Uh, different brain areas respond and stimulate expression, like musical expression. Others uh, in, um, initiate and coordinate uh, movements such as dance, drama, activates language and emotional networks within the brain. The visual arts stimulates a processing system that recalls reality or, or creates fantasy. Um, you and I would probably just know that as imagination. There is a researcher, uh, Dr. Anita Collins, um, who, um, and I was very grateful to a parent uh, earlier this year who shared this work with me. Um, and she has, been, has taken a lot of neuroscience studies and looked at their research on the brain and she's actually applied them to music. And she's discovered that playing a musical instrument engages nearly every area of the brain at once. Um, and so that's things like the, the visual, the auditory and the, the motor cortexes are all at work. And and, and she was saying, she says that if you learn a musical instrument, therefore you are practicing and therefore you are um, going through sort of a discipline structured practice, which and all of these things actually strengthens brain function. So it's not too late for you perhaps to go and learn a musical uh, instrument. Um, so I would highly recommend that for your cognitive development, no matter how old you are. Um, the arts at West Island School, it's just not about expressive events and concerts and, and things that afford us emotional responses really. Uh, people at West Island, the students and, and uh, my colleagues, they, they see the arts as something that is deeply cognitive. And um, they know, we know that they, the arts develop essential thinking skills and tools like pattern recognition, uh, mental representation of, of things that we observe or, or imagine. Um, and beyond sort of the, the benefits of cognition, cultivating creativity and, and creative experiences in the arts. We know that by singing and playing and dancing and listening, going to the movies, watching theater, things, all those sorts of things enhances our emotional well-being. And we now, when we know now in this current environment that we're in, that that is more than ever so important. And being able to experience the arts is quite uplifting. And I know yesterday, uh, Helen, and myself, we were doing some singing behind some masks for a Christmas thing. And uh, it was the first time I'd made music in such a long while. And it was such a, a really great experience for my own well-being. Um, so I think you've probably all had some of your own experiences um, where emotion has, has 
has been generated by an arts experience. So if you want to share something with Helena in the, uh, the, the question and answer, let, let us know what you, if you've got a favorite arts moment or experience which made you smile and made you feel good. I'd be interested to know what that was. I'll move on and perhaps Helena can come and let us know that at the end. Um, so what is creativity? Now I'm going to move quickly through here. So these six, um, six indicators are very useful for helping us to guide and create experiences to cultivate creativity. Cult create, defining creativity is really, really difficult and I'm not even going to attempt to do it, but it's these six things that that indicate to us what um, somebody that is being creative. So educating for creative thinking helps our young people uh, develop capacities for work that perhaps can't easily be replicated by machines these days or address sort of those local and global challenges. So thinking creatively in a humanistic way is so vital. And in the arts, that's what we try and cultivate. Um, we want our young people to discover and to, to find and to develop their talents. Yes, we're all about you being sort of creative for cognitive reasons and, and, but, and well-being reasons. But really for me, after so many years, I just love the experience of our of students wherever I've been, seeing them experience the arts and discovering themselves and doing something in the arts, it makes them feel proud, it makes them feel happy, and it makes them feel part of a community. And that's something that's really important to me at West Island School is that we are inclusive. It's not exclusive. Anybody can be involved in the arts. Anybody uh, can be taught to think creatively, um, to analyze situations, to break down those challenges, to innovate new ideas, to take something like you were doing before, the, the Lego block and creating it as a, as a chopstick holder, take something that exists and, and give something that uh, exists now a new perspective. So the creative thinking process, this is a model that uh, the faculty and I devised several years ago. And uh, we wanted to find something that united the, the five disciplines together. And so we came up with these words and this, this particular model. It's not sequential, it, it does go, it is cyclical, but it doesn't always go in the one direction either. And so these six key phases actually drive the process and guide us to, to being creative. And it's our role as teachers to give our young creative artists those inspirations that foster curiosity to drive them around the circle basically here um, and to sort of extend their learning into other areas um, and to different levels that they can actually realize uh, artistic outcomes with. So Inspiration and questioning are really the seeds that lead to intent, our in artistic intentions. So you've got to have an idea, to, you've got to have an intention to start with. And from there, ideas are generated. And so what we do is we provide a lot of materials, immerse the, the young people in arts experiences, uh, the way other practitioners use it, other composers do it, uh, other actors uh, use use uh, life experiences. So we're not really teaching a prescribed curriculum of content or information, but it's looking at other people and how we can take those art forms and personalize it. So what happens is we have these intentions, we talk about, we give them strategies to come up with ideas, and they then start to implement and move through that development phase where they go through lots of trials and experiments. Now, something we all say here in the arts, and well, I hear this word quite often is the word mistake. Nothing is ever a mistake. Um, 
or an error in the arts. Uh, in fact, the greatest of inventions have come about because of things that weren't quite working. And so they were trialed and experimented and something eventually came that was right from it. So nothing is ever a mistake. And we try and say that from a, a particularly a growth mindset because often children are very, very um, nervous to make mistakes. They don't want to be seen uh, in front of others to make mistakes. But we say it's okay to make, um, to, to try something out. If it doesn't work, you keep working through this creative process. So you implement it, you develop it. If it doesn't work and you evaluate it, you go back to the ideas phase. So not something that might not go right always leads us back to something else and to start again. So that whole implementation development phase, it's really messy. Uh, uh, and often, you know, I see so many students throwing their ideas out and starting again. Again, we say, don't throw them, put them to one side. Nothing is a mistake, you can come back to it. So this sort of curiosity drives these questions of what works, what doesn't. And it's really important that we, um, that we embed in our children to put aside fears of, of not getting it right the first time and to accept frustration too. Um, so finally towards the end here, reflection is, is one of the key things. It's one of those uh, moments when we look back and think, okay, well, how did I do? How, is it working? Does it speak to my audience? Does it, does it engage people? And so that's when you evaluate things. Now then you can move on to, yep, I'm ready to present or eh, something's not quite right. So then you can go back through the cycle and try, try again with more experimentation. Um, at the beginning of the phase of the, one of the phases at the beginning, sorry, is the ideas phase. And uh, brainstorm is a really important thing. And so for ideas to be born, we often use individual and group strategies. So, so that's our model of thinking. And let me just take you through a couple of strategies that we use in classroom. There, there are many, and often the children come up with, and the young people come up with our, um, their, own, their own strategies as well. So. Let me take you through a couple. So mind maps are a useful tool for um, the recording of ideas. And, uh, and often these mind maps can be in response to questions or, or stimuli, which show curiosity and wonderings. So mind maps are used in nearly every subject. So a lot of this creative thinking brainstorm, it, it's a transferable skill across many different subjects. And we do it regularly. And it's part of a thinking model. And so if you can take that model and take that process and find some strategies that work for different subjects, this is cultivating creativity. So what I've got here is I've got an, uh, a page from an IB uh, art sketchbook. And this is a mind map that sh is very rich in detail and it's probably a bit small, the writing, but um, it's not important that you see all of these words, but what you can see is there's a lot of ideas here that the, um, the student has brainstormed and has linked together and has found themes among those. So there's a lot of critical thinking going on as well. So what this student is doing, this artist, um, she is looking at the transition through life um, and what happens as we grow. And actually this work is based on herself. So um, this is a concept. It's an autobiographical exploration of identity over time. And so in that mind map, she has got other artists, she's got styles, she's got different techniques that, that could be used. So that's a very advanced stage, an example of something that's in a sketchbook for an art student. This one is a year seven student, and this is in a, a drama student. And you can see on the right there, they're looking at a statement of inquiry. And uh, from that statement of inquiry, again, questions are raised and you can see a little mind map, very simplistic, very one dimensional, but it's helping um, this student to uh, brainstorm uh, different styles of, of theater. And what ends up happening is, and you'll see this in a video shortly at the end, towards the end, um, when the 
when the, the student looks at the different types of theatre that don't use human voice, um, she decides to pick up on one of those and then she goes and researches it. She finds out lots of information about it and then in a role of a being a performer, she creates her own um, um, version and she does blacklight puppetry and she takes it to a very, very sophisticated level. I, I was so impressed with it. Um, there are other kinds of uh, strategies that we use. Film will use a lot of storyboard technique. Same with drama sometimes. People will sketch out uh, moment to moment. There's another tool that we use called Scamper. And you can see there's uh, about seven different um, seek uh, yeah, seven different series of questions that help take an existing idea and look at it through a different lens to innovate something that's new or, or novel. And much like your Lego activity that you did a little bit earlier. This is a music process journal, actually. Now, process journals are another part of the uh, thing that we do to cultivate creativity. And this is something that you can do at home as well. Um, it is important part of writing things down, uh, the journey of, of um, that cultivating your own creativity. So what we have in front of you here is a, a musician. And uh, thankfully for technology these days, um, rather than just a sketchbook, this is a, a page out of a, a slide presentation. But the, the student has has got, a, has got a very rich and varied record of his, um, his processes of creating and, and researching. And so, so some, as a teacher, I'm reading this and I'm, I can understand his artistic ideas. I can see what thinking he's gone through. I can check some of his knowledge that he's dealt with, uh, with musical knowledge. And that all of these kinds of journal entries help us as teachers to guide those next steps for, um, for students and their, and their learning. A process journal also is really great because it also helps justify our, our creative decisions. Um, this is another one from drama and you will see uh, this, uh, a student in a, who does a ventriloquist uh, performance as part of her GCSE. And you can see the, the research that's gone on uh, and also uh, how this student, this drama students actually uh, found ways to learn how to do the art of uh, ventriloquism and, and has really done a lot of independent learning here, uh, but just purely by journaling, putting in questions, finding other resources to inform her next steps. Let me play you um, a video now, um, the last video, and this one is I'm going to show you uh, some st students across the, diff the five different disciplines. And they're talking about the steps that they went through to create this work. And it really is some um, very impressive work at this point. Well, first we had to choose like a key which we're uh, going to compose in, and then we were choosing different chords, and then um, we we're putting a melody over the chords to see what would go well. Uh, I went back and tried to see uh, what I did wrong, and uh, it turns out there was like an accidental flat in there, so yeah, I changed that and I was good again. I also had to listen to it like a few times and to make sure that it sounded uh, great and it like it sounded okay and it didn't sound dissonant, so that's also creative. I get up, cautious like I've stepped over her line, and now she's mad at me. After time of being forgiving and kind to me. The first step in creating a performance is reading the play. In this case, The Girl in the Hood by Zella Copton. After doing so, we needed to research the play to have a thorough understanding of the characters, the context, and the style. And when I was researching, I was really struggling with word pronunciations, so I watched online tutorials and videos to help me overcome that challenge. <laughs> they were nice to you. They said hi, but you said, can you say something? <laughs> 
You need to calm down. I need to calm down. I don't need to calm down. Okay, that was a bit extra. When I was rehearsing, I asked my peers and Miss Rochester to look at short sections of my performance, and they gave me constructive criticism and feedback of how I could improve. Our final step was presenting our performance. Yet, even after doing so, we need to be able to reflect and see whether or not our artistic vision was accomplished. I think it all starts with an idea. Uh, you can find this idea from the things around you. I try to gather all my ideas together, um, including the location, how I'm going to film it, what equipment I'm going to use, the kind of actors I want, uh, what I want to express through the film, and uh, the narrative, of course. And once you get this idea, you can start to take it into action, do some testing. important thing is to put it actually onto a film and after that it all comes down to your editing and how you make everything look afterwards in post. <laughs> Uh, examples of, of creativity uh, what they're showing what I absolutely love about this is that they the students take abs ownership of of their learning and you find that it just starts to build and build they go and seek more they find ways to um, solutions to things they find um, they learn new things along the way and so that little um, that last dance there that uh, black light uh, dance theater uh, was that year seven student who amazingly thought okay well I've, I've learned about sort of black light theater I just um, want to recreate it myself so went through all the trouble to go and find a sort of fluorescent paint uh, created um, the the parts that she stuck onto her body she thought about the setting that she was in exactly the same process as the drama students, exactly the same process as the um, film students are doing. So being cultivating creativity is about uh, coming up with ideas, owning those ideas, and then building them to make them into something personal, and along the way, pick up knowledge. Um, in fact, those the film students there, what they've been studying is they've been studying uh, Russian film theorists uh, in the 1920s, and they've been applying a lot of the techniques that they were using in the 1920s and been recreating them in a, in a Hong Kong setting. So uh, quite... <laughs> quite amazing in terms of um, the, the work that they have uh, created uh, based on the work of others and bringing, giving it a new perspective. So that's absolutely creative, um, cultivating creativity. The last thing here about West Island School and creativity is it, it goes beyond our classroom. And, um, and so while perhaps we're not, that, that thinking process, that model is still being used, but we now do it outside in our, through our CAS program. And there's a list of CAS uh, activities there um, that we did in term one last year. And um, Circle in the Water, that logo, it's a logo we've had for a long time. And uh, again, it was part of the faculty. I, I wanted to have some sort of um, something that, that 
brought us together. And so just like uh, when you throw a stone in the water and, and that, that pebble and then all the effects ripple out, that's what we believe is that a ch one single person can do something artistic and that has an amazing effect and ripples out and affects and engages different audiences. So we, we had this and that's where that circle in the water. The other thing, Hong Kong is a circle in the water. Um, it's a local context for us. And we do believe in creativity, inquiry, and expression as a, as a faculty. And these are just some pictures of some fantastic CAS activities uh, through drama club, art club, lunchtime concerts, uh, dance, dance events, and uh, filming for this looks like this is Diwali, Diwali ball. Um, so what can you do at home for creativity? Um, well, Christmas is coming along, coming up. So maybe grab uh, some karaoke, uh, have some karaoke fun, do some Christmas sing-alongs. Um, put, put a doodle diary out on, on the coffee table and just leave it there for the whole family just to draw and extend other doodles. Uh, Maybe if you're keen, a family dance challenge, perhaps. Um, go look for the Jerusalem, uh, that's the latest dance craze, uh, which is, has come out of South Africa. Uh, really great move. So maybe you can challenge the, the family to, to do that over Christmas. Uh, for film. Um, maybe get your children to talk to their grandparents and find out a life story and get them to recreate it just using a mobile phone and uh, and filming uh, an interview or recreating part of that story. There's lots of online um, concerts and theater available at the moment. So go search for um, so some professional theater and uh, music online. And they're the sorts of things that you could, could do at home. Um, and of course, don't forget that creative model, you know, ask them about their ideas, ask them how they develop things, uh, what did they think, did it work? And also just here, I thought you might like to see, um, and there's quite a number here, there's 33 over the last three years of uh, year 13 students who've gone on to do arts-based courses. So there's architecture, we've got um, fashion, dance, theater, acting, music, interior design, film. Uh, so, and all over the world, UK, uh, Canada, um, the United States and in Australia. Now, what's next? Um, I just wanna show this to you. This is a little bit controversial. And this was an ad that was placed last year in the UK press by the UK government. And it caused an uproar because what you've got here is a dancer, Fatima is a, is a dancer. And they're saying that really there's no future for her as a dancer. So her next job could be in cyber. Um, there was an absolute outroar and uh, the government withdrew very quickly this ad campaign. And when people started to look at it, uh, there were some really great tweets and things. And I came across this. Someone had actually sort of deconstructed the, the campaign and had said, well, you know, you need a typographer to actually put the text in. Um, you need uh, somebody who's done design work of, of fashion for ballet clothes, furniture maker, an architect, um, an interior designer, a photographer. So it was a really interesting response. And so I think as creative people, uh, particularly in the arts, they have to work very hard at, at saying that the arts matter. And I think that that um, it helps when you've got you know, the World Economic Forum, you've got the OECD, they are all promoting creativity. And that's what we do here at West Island School. Here are just some very traditional jobs that are available. I'm just gonna flick through these because I, not I want you to read them, but just look at the volume of different um, careers that you could have just by studying arts. And a very interesting statistic there um, about the UK industries as a growing sector uh, between 2012 and 2022. So creativity, we've all got it. You can be taught how to be creative. Uh, it's a wonderful thing 
to be a part of that journey with, with our young people here at West Island School. You can carry it on at home. Um, I know probably many of you uh, might be involved in the arts as well. Uh, we have many families who are involved in the, um, in the arts in Hong Kong. And I feel very blessed that we have got such support uh, from our community uh, for the arts and creativity. And um, I will say to you, thank you very much for being with me tonight. And I'm going to uh, hand over to Helena. Thank you, Lee. That was fantastic. Um, some really, really interesting and valid points there. Um, I think one of the my, one of the key things for me, Lee, I think, is um, this point that creativity isn't just an add-on. You know, it's not something that we just add on in the classroom. It, it really is a set of psychological skills which are going to be so important and crucial for this for this twenty first century. You know, um, set of students that we're we're releasing into the world. Um, I think that's come through so strong and um, always fabulous for me to see that big list of levers and where they go to all around the world in those those arts jobs amazing from um you know washington to do architecture to doing fashion and design in sydney to doing fine art in london i mean it's really it's really sending our students all over the world isn't it yeah yes so that's great so thank you all very much for um coming tonight and um having your time and listening to lee and i'd just like to say a, a really big thank you um for preparing that for us lee really 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 fantastic so thank you everybody and um we will see you soon Good night.